Grigory Sokolov is, uh, is someone very special, not only because he's possibly the most phenomenal pianist of our time, at least he's considered by many people, and, and, and he's, uh, he's got a, a following of uh, fans, which is exactly like, like it was, you know, 40, 50 years ago when, when all these great artists, you know, were, were considered as legends. And Grigory is certainly one of the most secret and uh, reserved, reclused artists, if ever there was one. We've got a very strange relationship because after all, we've known each other for many years. And uh, there's, I think, a mutual respect. Uh, and to a degree that actually last year I heard him uh, do a recital in Paris where I thought we played Brahms also Schumann, and, um, but I had the impression, a very, very, very intense impression of having spent an evening with Brahms at Brahms's house in Hamburg or Vienna or wherever. The, the physical stature, the, the physical um, corpulence uh, is very much alike. And when he played those Opus uh, 117, uh, in a light that only gave the appearance of his silhouette and the uh, total inner concentration that he evoked, I thought I, th I thought I was I was with Brahms, and I told them that when we had dinner after the the, the concert, he invited me to his hotel and we had some dinner which he had, he had prepared in advance. You know he. Uh, collected because at that hour it's impossible. But um, and we had plenty of wine, and, and Brahms could have had plenty of wine as well. So we carried on, on the, in the same ambiance. We made a film with him at the Théâtre des Champs Élysées in Paris. I, I really wanted to, to do that very badly because there were three Beethoven sonatas and the seventh Prokofiev sonata, seventh Prokofiev sonata, which lends itself to the camera naturally, and in his performance, you know, of course when you feel that it's an earthquake taking place and, uh, and the, the, the whole world is going to collapse. Uh, well, actually, he came here to, the, to my place the day before, the evening before, because he wanted to practice. I left him here alone, uh, where he could practice on, on my grand piano. And uh, I went upstairs, and he practiced for about 10 minutes, and then there was silence. So I didn't want to bother him. And, for 20 minutes, still silent, half an hour silent. So I said, maybe something happened, you know. And I came down. He had found in my huge discotheque all the stuff that I had about Glenn Gould. And uh, I then discovered why he came to practice, so-called practice. He wanted to talk about Glenn Gould, whom he adored and considered a, a real genius. And when I said to him, Gregory, what a, let's talk about you. He said, no, you're talking about a giant, and I'm just nobody by comparison. So that was typical. And the next day, when we started uh, preparing for the shooting, you know, all day long, where he always practices from 10 o'clock in the morning, if the concert is 8.30, say. He practices from 10 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Then he orders a vegetarian meal for himself, goes back to the hotel, comes back at 6.30 uh, in concert attire, practices for another hour, then the concert, which has always three parts, not two as usual. The first one is on the program. The second one is also on the program. But the third part is his encores. And there are always six of them. Different. I mean, he can change from one day to the other. Six of them 
every second time that he comes back from backstage. And then six, and that, that's finished, and then that's, that's his life. Quasi daily, um, at least, uh, well, it must be about 80 concerts every, every year. We have managed to film him during concerts and also rehearsal because I, I can manage to have a diversity of, of shots, which is very interesting, taken from, um, from the rehearsals. But what we have in terms of who is he? Who is Grigory Sokolov? Not a word, nothing. I'm burning with, with the ambition or desire to, to make a film about him, not only his uh, uh, concerts. And every time I started mentioning the possibility of making a film, he escapes the whole subject by saying, carry on with what, what you're doing with Glenn Gould. Or, uh, and he, call, he gives me telephone calls and, and talks about the films that he had seen, as if to, to tell me, you know, go ahead with me. No, no way, it's impossible. So I've got still some ideas and perhaps one day we're going to do this, but for the moment I'm still very frustrated. Although we have now enough material in terms of musical material to, uh, to feed a, a film. There were lots of things which I wanted to do in the past. Of course, a possible film with Carlos Kleiber but at the end of our correspondence was, uh, I am, ich bin Kapellmeister im Ruhestand, I am a conductor uh, on pension, uh, and I want to die without having any film made about me. And, uh, and uh, by the way, I knew nothing about conducting. And I asked Toscanini in my youth and Stokowski about conducting, and they also said to me that they knew nothing about conducting. So. Um, it was impossible during his lifetime, uh, but I still have some hopes for, for the future. There are also a few, you know, there are some young musicians who really have uh, exceptional talent. Um, I'm talking, of course, about Alexei Shadrin, who's a very great violoncellist. It's, uh, it's a tremendous scope, you know, I, I mean, with a, an extraordinary modest personality. There is a, a fantastic violinist who is just beginning a, a very serious career, whose name is uh, uh, Alain Pritchin, who has, I don't know how many concertos, at his disposal. If, if you are a concert organizer and uh, you want to have tomorrow the concerto number two by Martino, say something which he's never played, you, you call Alan Pritchin, and he's got it in his memory. He's ready tomorrow to do it. Any concerto that has been written. So, but he's also a very serious musician. Very, I mean, a musician. You know, we are craving for that kind of uh, musicians who are who are not um, 
involved in, in political circles, trying to, to build their own career. They are musicians who play music. And this is what I am interested in, really, more than anything else. And Kit Armstrong is a, a young, young fellow who, it's, it's very difficult to use the word genius, but it's, it's, it's something which is, a, it's, it's a mystery to me. It's a, a real riddle. Not only is he a fantastic pianist, with a, also an enormous repertoire, anything that you want, but he's a, one of those mysteries who seem to have the, the entire music of the West in the head, right starting from Guillaume de Machaut to contemporary music. Um, you know, the, the few musicians who have that, Glenn Gould, I'm sure that, according to what Menuhin says to me, that uh, uh, his teacher, Inesco, had also that. It's, it's amazing with Kit, and we have played uh, together. everything so you know everything you know I can't, I can't think of maybe maybe you could find some layers of, uh, of music which is perhaps less sympathetic to him that might miss but you know he can build you a program of music that was written during the First World War and make an entire program of that you know knowing all these works I, I, I remember when we were rehearsing here a Bach program and during the uh, Pause. We started talking about Saint Sans, and then I said to him that I am very interested in Saint Sans, but that I, I had read that very morning the clarinet sonata, and which I found a really un, uninteresting work. He sat at the piano and played it from from memory to me, you know. And then I mentioned the bassoon sonata, same thing. He's, he's unbelievable, and he's a wonderful composer. So, pianist, composer, knowledge. Um, and uh, you know, I knew him when he was ten. I heard him the first, for the first time when he was ten. I remember the Tempest Sonata, the Beethoven Opus Thirteen, Number Two, I think it is. And uh, he played it. He was ten, but he played it as if he was an old master, you know, lifting his hand. And I thought that maybe Hoshovsky, who then was a hundred and six, was was playing. You know, it, it had the, the, the quality of great mind. So these are the people I'm interested in.